Thank you, right honorable speaker and members. I rise to second the motion to pay tribute to the honorable Cecilia Atimogwal under Rule 60 of our Rules of Procedure. Right honorable speaker, um, as I get started, I would like to convey a message of condolence from uh, the Honorable Chagulanyi Senator Murobat, who was in the 10th Parliament with uh, the Honorable Cecilia Gual, also from Dr. Kiza Vesije, who was in the Constituent Assembly together with uh, Atat Cecilia Gual, and also from uh, the Honorable Elias Lukwago, who was in the 9th Parliament. Even though Atat was not in Parliament at the time, they were in the trenches together. They would have loved to be here in the gallery but they are unable to because uh, they are under house arrest and some on the run from the military. <laughs> right, Honorable Speaker. Honorable members, those. Honorable members, can we listen the good thing? The house arrest is not by this parliament. So can we have the motion seconded? Right, Honorable Speaker and Honorable Colleagues, the nation has again suffered a great loss with the passing of the Honorable Cecilia Atimo Gual, Dokolo District Woman Representative in Parliament. We condole with the family, relatives, friends, the people of Lango sub-region and the country at large upon this untimely loss. While we mourn the loss of our gallant colleague, Right Honorable Speaker, we pay tribute and celebrate a life that was well lived. The Honorable Cecilia Ogual was a stateswoman of outstanding and unparalleled dignity, a mother, an inspirational leader, one of the few politicians who exemplified impeccable work ethics and acted in the interest of her nation. She embodied peace and was an ardent advocate of affirmative action, rights of women and the girl child in particular, but above all, she was a champion of the rule of law and democratic governance. While Uganda may never see another attack, Cecilia Ogwal, she inspired countless men and women of valor. She deposited herself in many of us. Throughout her life as a leader, the Honorable Cecilia Ogwal consistently exhibited compassion and a strong commitment to foster our national democracy. She gained notoriety when she blatantly opposed the monolithic movement system, which had outlawed multipartism in our country. It was this bold stance that earned her the appellation Iron Lady, a respect she greatly worked with in life and guarded in action and candid speech. It is with great respect and gratitude that we extend this tribute to Atat, a true guardian of parliamentary institutional memory and a repository of rich experience. Relatedly, we should credit Atat for her effort in the global campaign for women emancipation and empowerment in our country. Women emancipation and empowerment are broadly encompassing concepts and require concerted efforts and comprehensive approach to fusion. It's not enough to boast about the number of women in leadership. These statistics should be accompanied by equitable and efficient service delivery. Right Honorable Speaker and colleagues, the citizenry desire leadership that is cognizant of the plight and aspirations of its citizens and an economy that creates opportunities for all. Right Honorable Speaker, this August House should take cognizance of the Honorable Cecilia Gual's achievements and wise counsel, which will forever be relieved in her towering legacy and profound impact on the downtrodden. She was an astute leader, seasoned politician, excellent banker, successful business personality, and a pioneer on various fronts. She was one of the founders of the Housing Finance Bank and the first female chairperson of Uganda Development Bank. Her tenure as the Secretary General of the Uganda People's Congress, UPC, from 1985 to 1992 was quite transformative in our country, as we saw. She also played a pivotal role in the Constituent Assembly and participated in the drafting and promulgation of the 1995 Constitution. As a member of the Forum for Democratic Change, she diligently served as the Opposition Chief Whip and as a Parliamentary Commissioner. Indeed, her remarkable skills, leadership skills, enabled the Opposition to achieve tremendously during the Ninth Parliament. It is absurd 
that the constitution process that she dedicated herself to was gradually eroded by the ruling government. Her passing has occurred at a time of heightened concern among Ugandans regarding human rights violations ranging from enforced disappearance to detention without trial. The Honorable Ogual, in her interview with the Observer paper in 2018, published in an article titled, I Survived Death 12 Times, disclosed that she had been targeted and repressed for her alignment with the opposition. This repression has been recurrent to all politicians who have challenged the regime. When shall these predatory tendencies stop? We unreservedly celebrate the Honorable Cecilia Ogwal's distinguished service to the legislature and her unwavering commitment to constitutionalism, the rule of law, human rights, equity, and inclusiveness. Without a doubt, she has played her part. Fellow Ugandans, I wish to remind you that we have not yet attained the desired freedoms and enjoyment of human rights guaranteed under the Constitution that she vehemently fought for. It is our constitutional obligation to pursue full realization, respect, uphold, and protection of our rights. This obligation, right honorable speaker, transcends our political affiliations and stature in society. What is required of us is to rise to the occasion and demand for what rightly and constitutionally belongs to us. Therefore, do not wait for another attack, Cecilia, to rise and fight for you. Rather, be a Cecilia Ogwal in your own right and for the common good. The passing of our esteemed colleague, the Honorable Ogwal, and many other similar deaths from foreign hospitals continue to expose the lacuna and deficiencies in Uganda's healthcare system. Many Ugandans succumb to treatable diseases, a consequence attributed to corruption and failure of the government to prioritize the health sector. This is why a handful of able Ugandans continue to seek medical attention abroad due to lack of confidence in the country's capacity to provide comprehensive health care for its citizens. This lamentable reality highlights the urgency to address systemic issues within Uganda's health care sector to ensure that our sovereign nation is not only capable, but also trusted to administer proper medical treatment to all Ugandans. Right Honorable Speaker, to the best of my recollection, from the newsroom up to date, where I was, I have known Atat Cecilia as a leader who detested corruption in all its moral and legal forms. In all its moral and legal forms. We should therefore applaud Atat for her clean record and for advocating for equitable sharing of the national resources to ensure national cohesion and balanced national development. We humbly urge this August House to seize every lawful opportunity and ensure that development disparities plaguing our country are thoroughly addressed through the budgetary process and effective legislation. As the Bible reminds us in Ecclesiastes 3, 1, to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. We celebrate a life well lived and implore ourselves to emulate a tart and the values that she embodied. May the Almighty God grant her eternal rest. Rest in peace, the Honorable Atim Cecilia Barbara Ogwal. I beg to submit. Thank you.